Ahoy there, mateys. Are you ready for a joke? Aye, aye. What's the stinkiest deck aboard a pirate ship? I don't know. What? The poop deck. <laughs> now, this next joke be a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? A pirate with a skeleton key. Take a look. Ah, what this key go to? Oh, look at this carriage. But where are the horses? Huh. Does the key fit in here? Come on. No. Oh. Huh. Maybe the key goes here. No. Oh. Uh. Hello, let me in. Let me in. Oh. oh. Maybe play some basketball. Oh, come on, key. Oh! Look at that lock! Maybe the key goes... What is this? Huh? Oh! Oh no! Oh, what a pretty house! Maybe the key goes to this? Oh, hello! Hmm... Oh, it's not working! Hello! Huh. Uh, where does this key go to? Maybe my diary? No? Oh. Hmm. Does this key belong to you? Here. <laughs> no, not yours! Ah! Oh, man. I'm never gonna find what this key goes to. Wait a second. Huh? What's that? Oh, 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 it's a treasure chest. Please work, please, 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 please. Oh, yippee, booty. What is the Bible? The Bible is one book made up of 66 little books full of chapters and verses. Inside those books are stories, songs, poems, in dreams, and together they tell one big story, God's story. The Bible is the most treasured book full of God's words that tell the true story of His amazing love. From the beginning of time, God spoke the world into existence, creating everything we see. God continued to speak through a family that He chose to show His love to the world. He spoke through the stories of the kings and told what was to come through prophets. When God's people rejected him, they were taken into exile, and God stopped speaking to them for hundreds of years. That's where the Old Testament part of the Bible ends. The New Testament begins with God sending his son, Jesus, to earth to fix our friendship with him once and for all. In the Gospels is where we can read the good news of how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changed everything. He made a way for us to be friends with God. Followers of Jesus started the church, which is how the good news of Jesus has spread all over the world. And at the end, God's story tells us about a future where Jesus will come back and make the world right again, which is really like a brand new beginning. When you look at everything that happened in the Bible, you will see that it is the story God wrote to show you how much He loves you. Everyone, get on your feet and sing along! Let's learn the books of the Bible! Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, you did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books 
of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Let's keep going, everybody. Hebrews and James. Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, first, second, third John, Jude and Revelation. Oh yeah, we did it. That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Because we love God's word. You can take a seat. Hey, so guess what? I can play two instruments at one time. Cool. I can play three instruments at one time. Well, I can play four instruments at one time. Prove it. Done. I have to give it to you. That's impressive. Kind of painful to my ears, but hey, you did it. You know what it makes me think about? How King Nebuchadnezzar tried to make God's people play instruments to worship him instead of God? No, I was actually thinking about Actually, wait, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah, I knew it. Our story starts with the word from the prophet Jeremiah. Hear ye, hear ye. Jeremiah was a prophet, meaning he heard messages from God and he told others what he heard. And before God's people went through some really hard things, which we'll get to in just a second, Jeremiah had a word from God that would help the Israelites make it through. Jeremiah told the Israelites that bad things were about to happen because of how they had turned away from God. But Jeremiah also said that they could still trust God to take care of them and to pray for those who were leading them. See, God knew what his people were about to go through, and he knew that a word from him would be the biggest help in their time of need. Help! Help! Someone help me! Soon after Jeremiah shared this message with God's people, the Israelites were forced out of their land. Get out of here! and they found themselves under the rule of an awful king named Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Wait, can we just call this guy Nebi? Sure. This new king, King Nebi, told the people that they weren't allowed to worship God anymore. He wanted them to bow down to him instead, and some people did. Get out of here. You can't be serious. I am serious, and so is this king. He even built a statue of himself and wanted people to bow down to it, play worship songs to it, and even pray to it. Yikes. King Nebi even went as far as to tell people if they didn't worship his statue, he'd have them thrown into a fiery furnace. He wouldn't really do that, would he? He would, and he did, to three men in particular, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Weird names, but okay. These guys may have had some weird names, but they had something else too. They had the words that God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. The words of God. Yeah, they knew that no matter what the awful king tried to do, they could trust God to take care of them. So when it was time to bow down to the statue, these guys stood strong. Oh, oh yeah, they did. And just like King Nebi had threatened, he threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace. Now don't try that at home. And just for good measure, he had it turned up to seven times hotter than normal. These guys were toast. You would think so, but it turns out when they were in the fire, they weren't alone. There was a fourth person in there with them. Hold up, wait a minute. Now how did that other person get in there? It was a mystery to King Nebi too. He looked into the furnace and got the surprise of his life when he saw what looked like an angel in there. Surprise! Exactly. And when they came out of the furnace, they weren't burned at all. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. It smells like detergent to me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego remembered what God said and it really helped them. And for the Israelites, remembering what God said came in very handy over the next several hundred years because for a long time, God didn't say anything at all. Zip. 
They had to rely on the truths and the promises in God's word to help them wait for when he would send someone to save everyone once and for all. Like a superhero? You're talking about Superman? Nope, I'm talking about Jesus. You know, God's son, the savior of the world. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I thought you were talking about. The story is so important because it shows us that just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we need God's word too. Ain't that the truth? And just like God's word helped those guys know how to live, God's word can help us each and every day. Ah, God's word helps me. God's word helps me. Repeat after me in your best parrot voice. Ah, God's word helps me. Get on your feet and sing along! How to be a pirate. Today, we find an eager young lassie in hopes of becoming a pirate. Observe, today, we'll teach our potential matey how to dress like a pirate. First, of course, we have to start with the pirate pants and roughly shirt. Excellent. Next, every pirate needs some shiny boots. And of course, a pirate needs a regal coat and a striped headpiece. But a pirate's best accessory isn't his coat or even his shiny shoes. While a pirate's clothes may look very piratey, they don't provide much help. But the Bible, now that's a pirate's biggest treasure. Sometimes a pirate can get a little turned around, unsure of what to do or where to go. That's when a pirate turns to the greatest help in the history of the world, the Bible. 
Like when her fellow pirates are telling her it's okay to do something her parents told her not to do, she can look to the Bible for help. When she does, she'll see the truth that when we obey our parents, things will go well for us. Or when she's in trouble and begins to think that God doesn't love her, she can read the Bible and hear God say that nothing she does can make him stop loving her. God's Word is our greatest help every day. Arr, we found the treasure. God's Word is like pure gold. And it goes like this. Your word to me, that's the Bible. Your servant, well, that's me, Captain Goldtooth. It's also you, me crew. It's like pure gold. I treasure what you say. Well, shiver me timbers. That verse can be found in Psalm 119. All right, me crew. Let's see if you can say it in your best pirate voice. Repeat after me, Captain Goldtooth. Your word to me, your servant, is like pure gold. I treasure what you say. Psalm 119, 140. Well, shiver me timbers. You'll have God's word buried in your heart in no time. All right, me crew, get up and dance like a pirate. Take a seat. When you read your Bible, there are three questions you can ask. The first question is, what? What did we read in God's Word today? Did we read about A, Adam and Eve? B, a pirate walking the plank? Or C, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? The answer is C. We read about how God gave a special message to the prophet Jeremiah that helped his people for years to come. Three of those people were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They believed God's words and leaned on them in a time when they were very unsure of what was going to happen. The next question to ask when you read the Bible is, so what? Or in other words, why does this matter to me? you're probably not going to find yourself in a situation where an evil king wants to throw you into a fire, but later today, you may find yourself unsure of how to do the right thing. That's when you can look to the Bible and know that God's word will always help you. And the last question to ask yourself is, now what? Now, what do we do with what we've learned? Well, there are lots of things we can do. When we don't know what's next or what's right, we can look in God's Word for an answer to our questions. We can memorize verses from the Bible so that they can help us even when we don't have our Bible handy. And we can pray and ask God to help us if we ever find ourselves in a spot where we don't know what we should do. And whenever you read the Bible, remember to ask yourself, what, so what, and now what? Mateys, bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's pray. Father God, thank you for giving us your word to help us each day. Your word is more helpful than anything else in the whole wide world. Whenever we need help, please remind us of something we've heard from your word. We love you. Amen. In case you missed it, here's what you need to know. God's word helps me. Yeah!